there's a, uh, there's a real atmosphere here of, of worship, praise, and I just really sense a, a covering of the love of the Father in this house today. Um, I want to go back into that chorus here because I believe there's something that we need to do to, to position ourselves for what God wants to do today. And, and that is this. I'm going to be talking here in a few minutes about marriage, about family, about being together, God's plan. But even before we go into that, how many know that we live in a society where there's a lot of hurt, a lot of damage, a lot of disaster with just what all is going on. But right here, right now, regardless of where you've been, regardless of your experience, let's just give it all to the Lord right now. Because we're going to say some things that, that might touch, in fact, everybody here today. And But we know that our God is a gracious, loving God, and there's hope. Amen. So let's just, everybody, let's begin to worship again. We'll sing their chorus again. And let's just believe God for that blanket of love just to permeate the whole atmosphere here again. Amen. Pastor Nicole. My God, how great you are. Sing it together. How great, how great. circumstances into your family. My God. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Over my finances, over my job, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to be in this house together. And we just put you center, Lord Jesus, in everything that is said and done. Regardless of where we've come from, we know when we leave this room today that we're going to be changed, transformed from glory to glory, understanding, knowing, and learning more about who you are, Jesus. So we just turn this next 30 minutes over to you, Lord God. Let your word come alive. Let there be healing in the house. Let there be joy and grace. Let there be hope for tomorrow because you are a great and awesome God. And we just thank you this day. We can say you're a great and awesome God because you're a God that answers prayer. And let's just, God, let's just thank him again right here this morning because he's going to be doing a work this morning that is going to be amazing, strong, and blessed in our lives in Jesus' name. Before you sit down, give a high five to two or three people and say, get ready. We're going to have a good time this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give it up for the worship team, too. Good job. Brian, good job. Pray for me. Last uh, Friday night, Pastor David took the staff out. We played bocce ball where you roll the ball. My shoulder's still hurting, I tell you. That. <laughs> That's how you tell when you're getting old. I told the first service that last a couple months ago, I dreamt that I was jogging. And in the morning, you wake up and you're sore all over. That's how you tell when you're getting old. <laughs> right, Daniel? <laughs> you, you, you can tell you're getting old when you sit in your rocking chair and you can't make a rock anymore. That's, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> hey, listen, we got this Inspired Life Conference brochure. Uh, we heard it on the, on the announcements here. Pastor Jordan, uh, Dee talked about it. Grab one of these here. 
because uh, it explains a little bit more of, of what we're doing. We believe that there's something in here for everybody to participate in. We've got Frank DiMaggio coming. We're going to be talking about team, and team covers everything, covers everything we're doing here, covers our families, everything. And then uh, Eric Butler, if you've never heard Eric Butler, you guys need to hear Eric Butler. Strong, prophetic, but yet wraps in around with what we're talking about as teams as well. And what we do is we have teaching, Pastor David's going to be sharing, and then we have breakouts where we have meetups. We've got, I think, seven or ten different categories. Pastor John, we, we're going to be getting together, and we work it out. We talk, and that was one of the highlights of last year. And then in Friday night of the conference, we have a big old reception. We pack out the, the warehouse next door, and we get a time to, to fellowship. And it's always a fun time, but it's an equipping time as well. Get signed up for that. Also, on your seat, something new if you've not seen this. This is our handouts that has a dual purpose. One is uh, these, these are the notes that I'm going to be sharing here this morning, page one and two. And then page three and four are the notes that we use in the life groups during the week. So we launch the topic here and break open the subject, and then we work it out and dig deeper during the week. So uh, grab that. If you're not in a life group, get signed up for a life group. We can do that in the Welcome Center as you leave here this morning. But So we're trying something new, and we want your feedback and see how that works. And... Uh, We'll continue doing that if that is a blessing for everybody. Okay, so we, we started several weeks ago, Pastor David, Pastor Jordan, started this topic of uh, doing life together. And, uh, and we talked about what it means to be together, be a part of the body of Christ. Uh, we talked about the challenges of being together, isolation, etc. And we believe that God wants to do something unique here among us. Uh, corporately and then individually, our families, etc., to draw us together. Because how many know the spirit of the age, especially the individualistic culture of the Bay Area, would want to separate us here? So we're kind of going cross grain, but I'll, I believe the spirit of God wants to do a work to bring us together. Everybody say together. So we're going to talk about today doing family and marriage together. Doing family and marriage together. And you got people here from all different types of backgrounds different marriage situations, different family situations. So, but irrespective of where you're at, uh, there's a promise I want to start with. Uh, it's in Genesis there, and it's the, God, it's the promise God made to, to Abraham, Genesis 12, 3. Before I read this promise here, I want to encourage everybody to pay attention because there is the life of God in this promise as it was spoken years ago to Abraham. The same power of God is available in this promise to make this promise real today in your life. And so let's read it together aloud. But before we do that, I want you to make sure you, this, is, this becomes yours. We're not just reading text off a piece of paper or a slide, but let's lay claim to this here this morning. Let's read it aloud. Ready? In you, Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In this promise to Abraham, what you have here is God saying that this is his eternal plan and purpose for marriages and families. This is God's, in fact, you can go through the Bible, you can see a thread where God has already always had a promise and a purpose for families and marriages because there's something that he wants to do on this earth with the marriages and families. In fact, let's read this again together. And like I said before, I, I pray everybody lays claim to this this morning. Ready, go. In you, Abraham. All, let's stop right there, all. Let's let that soak in, not just a few, not just because you came from the wrong side of the track or you got a pedigree that's, that's all messed up. All families of the earth might be blessed. Bobby, what does that say? It says, shall be blessed. Is that applicable for the people of Gateway today? Is that applicable for every, regardless of where you've been, regardless of your history, I believe there's the power of God available in this one promise as well as hundreds of other promises to see God's purpose and plan of what he originally wanted to see it come about. How many know God? God is a God of restoration. Our God is a God of the reversal, the God of the breakthrough, amen? Our God can step into any situation, any circumstance and begin to bring about his purpose and plan. So in Abraham, in you, all the families of the earth shall be Blessed. Before we go any further, I have a couple of questions that I want to do a quick family checkup here. So let's ask some questions. Number one, do our families and our marriages reflect God's design and purpose? And, you know, we have people come in all the time for counseling, for help, 
And one of the questions we ask is the, 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 the scope of understanding of what God's plan and purpose is for marriage and family. How many know God has a plan for not only you individually, but for your family, for your kids, for your generations? Right, David Smith? God's got a plan, bro. And God's got a, a, a design here. Do we understand what that is? There's a way to discover this. Second question, is Jesus Christ the cornerstone of our marriage and our families? Quite often we have couples come in or families that need help, and it's easy to find out pretty quick that maybe Jesus is kind of really on the periphery. He is not the centerpiece. Because, my friends, when Jesus Christ is the centerpiece, he's the cornerstone of a relationship, everything changes. In terms of priorities, in terms of character, in terms of how we treat one another, everybody, we understand that Jesus Christ, when he's the centerpiece of a family, of a marriage relationship, then we have the potential to see the purpose of God fulfilled. Amen? Now, it's a little bit different if he's on the periphery. we got to get him back into the center. We're going to be talking about that this morning. Thirdly, though, even with God's promise, we still ask, what's going on in our country with marriages and families. Let me just kind of, before we go further, we reconcile the fact that in this room today, there's a whole assortment of family relationships, marriage relationships. There's some people that have been through some real, real challenges, some tough times, some brokenness, and uh, some single people here. We got single families. We got blended families. In fact, last count we have is nine different types of families in America today. And that was about two years ago. There's probably more. Everything we say today, let it be covered with grace. Because some people may disqualify themselves even before we get started. Okay, that doesn't apply to me. Or I failed. There's, there's no hope with me in this situation now. Or any other. Friends, everybody. This applies to everybody here. Not only your individual family, but the family of God at large. Amen. And so let's just uh, listen very carefully and let's ask the Holy Spirit as to how he wants to apply what we want to hear this morning. Because we believe that God has a purpose Jesus is the centerpiece, and there's an answer to the chaos that's going on in America within the families. You ready? Okay. Number one, the challenges. We've got a couple of quick challenges here that we're facing. There's a lot more, but I just want to touch base on two challenges for the marriages and families here, especially in Silicon Valley. Number one is the battle for your time. The battle for your time. Paul tells us here to redeem the time because the days are evil. How many know the days are evil? We're living in some crazy days. And Paul here says, guys, I need you to take ownership of your time, take it back, redeem the time, because there's a direct correlation to our time and the health of everything else we're talking about, our marriages, our families, etc. The days are evil. And so he said, guys, okay, you don't need to go to counseling. You don't need this. He says, take, take back the time, okay? And how many know if you've been in this valley for any length of time, time is a challenge, Time is a huge challenge. My wife and I came here in 81 to start a church, and I also was bivocational, and so we sold PCs uh, when they first came out, and then I went and supported Intel Corporation for like 16 years, and we were right in the heart of all the technology development for many years. You talk about pressure. You talk about time constraints, and it was a difficult situation for many, and we had to make a decision that... I'm going to control the time and not let other people control my time. Amen? Because if we don't take ownership of it, this, this valley will just swallow us up. And it's amazing how the more technology we get, it's amazing how that the more less time we have. There's a reason why in this valley now, most incomes are dual income. In fact, one-third of the families in the Santa Clara area, Santa, San Jose area, need some type of food support and financial support just because of the housing crisis, housing funds, and et, et cetera, the prices, et cetera. And so it's amazing that... That, it, that the, the more technology we have, it's more difficult many times just to, to get together. But I got good news and bad news with this here. The good news is, is that statistics show today families are spending more time together than 25 years ago. That's the good news. That's the good news. But the bad news is, is what they're doing with their time. So families get together, but on average, teenagers are spending six to nine hours a day 
on their mobile device, their iPads, or whatever. So we might, have, we might be in the same roof together, but we're not even connected, whatever. And so families, husbands and wives, I mean, they might be home together, but five to six, seven hours a day watching TV, cable, etc., football game, go Green Bay Packers, or whatever. You know, it's, 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 this, it's time. In fact, teenagers today, on average, check their cell phone, mobile, for whatever information 74 times a day. I remember distinctly years ago and my wife sitting at the other end of the table, we're having dinner, here's Carrie, here's Sharon, and they're texting each other at dinner underneath the table. They're, I think, what are you, give me those phones, give me those phones. Stop it. So we don't want it. Time, everybody say time. My question is, is who's controlling your time? Somebody else? Businesses? Your job, whatever? Is it hard? Absolutely it's hard. I've been there. Oh, we can talk about that for a while. But a decision needs to be made today that says before the Lord, I'm going to redeem my time. And that I'm going to be fruitful with my time, with my marriage and my family. Amen? Number two. Number two is the spiritual warfare against the family. Spiritual warfare against the family. Peter says your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now some of us, we understand this verse very well on an individual basis. But how many know that there's also a plan of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy our marriages, our families, our kids? How many know that it's a real warfare? Pastor John, can I borrow this? This is a book I wrote years ago on spiritual warfare, anointed to deliver. It's on Amazon. And there's a whole chapter we have in here on spiritual warfare against the family. In fact, this is like a day or two seminar just on this one topic because how many know that, in fact, this has happened many times. In fact, we had a couple come in one time for counseling and with the husband and wife, and you start asking them some questions, and pretty soon we found out this is not, Pastor Brett, a, a marriage issue right now. We had to take the gentleman aside. We had to have some pretty intense prayer, and we did some spiritual warfare without going into details. About a couple of weeks later, the wife calls me up and says, what did you do to my husband? He is a totally changed man because he was set free from some oppression over his life that he was bringing into the marriage. And at first, they were not discerning, okay? How many times do families get together and there's fights, there's quarrels, there's division, the kids are crazy, they're on drugs, they're bouncing off the wall, whatever. And how many know that times that there could be a spiritual warfare component involved? We don't have time to, I mean, I got tons of stories to talk about how we, let me, let's, as an example, we had a couple come in one time their son, 24 years old engineer over at NASA Ames. One day, things started to happen to his mind, whereby he began to shift and get mental illness, et cetera, et cetera. And we began to teach the parents how to minister to their son. It took about a year, and he was completely healed from that because they addressed not just the physical, but also the spiritual. How many know that that could be a possibility within your marriages and your family? So my point is, let's be discerning about that. So the first challenge we're talking about is, is the time. The other one is the spiritual warfare. How many do we wrestle not against your wife is not crazy, your husband's not, whatever. There may be something else going on behind it. That's why we got Cleansing Stream. That's why we got Gateway Healing Center. Avail yourself of those uh, opportunities here so we can stay free in Jesus. Amen? Okay, now I want to give you four solutions here to help build a family, a marriage relationship, okay? Number one is make the decision to serve God. Make the decision to serve God. Let's read this out loud, the verse in Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, when we talk about making the decision to serve God, on an individual basis, yes, we all have made a decision at one time or the other, but how many of us have said, as for me and my house, everybody, we're going to serve the Lord. And you see what that does is it lifts us to a whole other level of opportunity to position ourselves to see the grace of God and the promise that we read earlier come to pass. Because you see, the etymology of the word house, is, Joshua is not only speaking of the, the physical house, but he's talking about not only his kids, but generations to come. So here's Pastor Carol sitting on the front row. She's got John, her husband, and she and John stand up and say, as for me and my kids, my grandkids, 
my generations to come, the ones that I'm not going to see, you know, off in the future or whatever, we're going to serve the Lord. Can anybody say amen to that? What that does is it positions you to say, Lord, in Jesus' name, we're going to believe the promise to Abraham, and we're going to believe for generational blessings. We're going to believe for that anointing, and the enemy, you cannot have any place in our family here because we're going to make this decision. And what that does is it becomes a catalyst for your intercessory prayer, a catalyst for ministry, for the anointing, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be able to to minister to your kids. I don't know how many times my wife and I, we would be praying and God would show us things about our own kids and God would show us how we need to pray for them, etc. So my encouragement here this morning, friends, is that you make a decision as far as me and my house. But I'm 70 years old, my son's 50, he lives in Florida. It doesn't matter. Prayer knows no distance or time or age. You can make that decision. I got testimonies if we had time this morning to give you examples of how people made that decision and it releases the Spirit of God to begin to work and to pray. I got examples. I wish I had time to to, to share some, but basically the bottom line is this, is when a couple, man and woman, maybe the husband doesn't even know the Lord, but the wife stands up and says, as far as me and my house, he's coming in the kingdom in Jesus, or vice versa, or whatever. My encouragement here is that everybody makes that decision here this morning. You may be single. Maybe God hasn't brought you your husband or wife yet, but you can stand up and say, as far as me and my house, whatever that looks like, we're going to serve God. Everybody got it? Okay, that's number one. Number two, believe God to restore his purpose in marriages. Peter here, he says, live as heirs together of the grace of life. He's talking to husbands. He says, husbands, dwell with your wife with understanding and be heirs together of the grace of life. Everybody say together. Okay, so watch this. Here's a couple holding hands, going shopping. Is that a sporting goods store or a grocery store? They're connected though. Is it Walmart? They're connected though. And he says here, lives together of the grace of life. Let me, let me share this a little bit. You know, for instance, we got this book Rick Warren wrote on the purpose-driven life. I think we should get something out on the market regarding the purpose-driven marriage, the purpose-driven family. Because the original agenda back in Genesis chapter 1, Adam and Eve were created, and God called them together. He said, I want you to be fruitful together. The, or, or the, 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 the or anointment, the anointing there was for them to multiply, be fruitful, have dominion together. You see, many times a husband will say, oh, I got my anointing. My wife, well, I don't know about her, but I got my, or vice versa. The wife will be out 100 miles ahead of the, of the husband and, and, and they're separate. My friends, I believe that there's an anointing on couples, that God wants to bring couples together because he says, be heirs together of the grace of life because one will put a thousand to flight, two will put 10,000 into flight. When a husband and wife come into agreement, you have the opportunity to see the power of what we read in Genesis 12 come to pass. For instance, you can stand up together, you hold hands together. Matthew says, if any two agree, it'll be done. And you can declare over your family, Deuteronomy 28, we're going to be blessed in the city. We're going to be blessed in the field. We're going to be blessed coming in. We're going to be blessed coming going out. We're going to be blessed because we're together. So husbands, do you know your wife's purpose and calling. Wives, do you know your husband's purpose and calling? And do you know your purpose and calling together? Because if you don't, you got some homework to do. And we want to help you. In fact, we got different resources. Pastor Brad and Kathy do a lot of marriage counseling. Daniel and Lydia, why don't you go ahead and stand up? Daniel and Lydia are new here. They uh, started a brand new small group here on Wednesday nights. So if you're a couple... And you want to learn about, you know, some of these principles here. Uh, They have a small group going. Pastor Brad and Kathy have a small group. We want to help marriages. We want to see marriages built. Wouldn't it be an amazing thing if we understood our wife's calling? My wife, she's just releasing here a book next month, a brand new book called Apostolic Women. How many ladies here know you got an anointing on you, you got a purpose on your life, and you got, God's got something for you to do? Husbands, we need to help them. We need to do it together. Paul says here, be heirs together of the grace of life. But I'm not married yet. Well, whoever God brings into your life, this belief for that to be a, a, a fruitful scripture. Amen? Got it? That's number two. Number three. Number three, rebuild your family altar. 
Isaiah said, you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. A family altar, what is a family altar? It's simply an opportunity for the family to get together, where it's daily or weekly or whatever, and you impart, you bless, you teach, you share. And it's really very simple. Uh, within our house, it was Monday night. We had an ice cream bash Bible night. We had bowls of ice cream. And then uh, there's Gary running the slides. He's my youngest son back there. He had chocolate ice cream all over the New Testament every week. It's just eating and whatever. And we had a lot of fun. We didn't do deep, you know, exegetical studies of the hypostatic union and, you know, whatever. But we, we, it was, we kept it simple. But yet there was an impartation. And I praise God for my wife. She's over there teaching grow tracks. In fact, if you've not been to grow tracks, you guys need to go to grow tracks. She's over there teaching it right now. But I praise God for her because we were like this together. And we were sharing life together, and we shared, and she imparted a lot to our kids together for many years. And so we see the fruit from that. But you say, I don't know how. Uh, if you could show the next slide, Gary. Uh, there's an app called Version. Most of you understand it. Most of you have seen this. I had a lot of guys say to me, I don't know how to do this family altar or devotional time. Listen, all you need to do is download this. They've got hundreds of devotionals. Just get together, whether it's once a week, once a night, whatever, and spend just a few minutes and kickstart this whole element of a family altar. What you're doing is you're imparting and opening the, the door for heaven to become re real within a family, begin ministering to the kids. And so I'm not going to ask for a show of hands how many do this now, but listen, let me encourage you. Redeem the time, discern what's going on, Make a decision to serve God and put him center with his word and his teaching. Amen? Got it. Number four. Number four. Impart blessing and purpose into your children and for generations to come. Impart blessing and purpose. Let's read this out loud together, Isaiah 54. Ready? All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be their peace. Did you know you have tremendous authority and grace and opportunity to speak blessing into your wife, to speak blessing into your kids. Yeah, but my son, he's 43 years old. He lives in Hawaii, and he doesn't know God. That doesn't matter. Jesus said, even bless your enemies. Bless. Everybody say bless. Bless. You have the opportunity to lay hands on and touch and impart blessing to your family, to your kids. You invite them to like a, a family altar time, and maybe they don't come. Fine. Bless them. Bless them. We need to become a church of blessing. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus lays out nine different types of blessing. And you can go through the whole Bible and it talks about the grace of being able to bless. And here, the context of Isaiah 54 here is such that it's giving us the promise that regardless of what's happened with your family, your kids, wherever they're at, you have the ability to speak into their lives and say, they're going to be blessed. Great shall be their peace. So we should do that with our kids, our grandkids. In fact, I do that all the time. I got grand, 10 grandkids, nine grandsons and one granddaughter. Figure that out. How did that happen? And they're hungry. They come over on Sunday afternoon. I thought my food bill would go down. It's going up. I'm going to take an offering. <laughs> but you get these little ones. You begin speaking blessing over them. You speak impartation, peace, joy, grace. You tell them you're going to serve God. You're going to be mighty man of God. My 14-year-old my grandson, when he was seven years old, his, his grandpa in Kansas City is a federal judge. And here I am out in California at Gateway. And he goes to show and tell. They ask him, what do you want to do when you grow up? He shows and he presents a picture of his grandpa out in San Jose and says, I want to be a preacher like my grandpa. Now, where did that come from? Where, where did that, that, that's because of the family generational blessing and for the impartation. How many know we can bless those that are around us? They may not receive it, but my friends, we have tremendous authority to be able to do that. We're to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come in, blessed when we go out. Everybody say blessed. And so the impartation of blessing, we can't negate that. And so here I gave you four different solutions. In the first one there, make a decision to serve God, not only you, but your generations, right? Get the husband and wife together to be heirs together of the grace of life. And then we talked about the family altar. And when you're in that setting, make a decision to bless. When you do that, go ahead, go to the next slide there, Gary. When you do that, the reality of this promise becomes a potential that the forces of hell cannot stop. And you stop and think what it would mean to have a blessed family. 
healthy, strong, secure, responsible. How many know that that is possible? Amen. Let's read this again together. In you, Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that means me. Amen. Did you get anything out of this? I'm finished. But there's one, one, one item that's not on the list here yet that I need to, to speak about. And that's probably the most important one here. Because we talk about families. We talk about all the different elements here. But there's a family of God that we're all a part of, right? And there may be people here that are brand new. I remember a time when I was not a part of the family of God. I needed to make a decision to receive Christ because when you do that, I become a part of the family here. So I want to pray a prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed right now because there's some here today. You are in the sound of my voice. You hear it and you're saying to yourself, you know what, this is all new to me. I may not understand a whole lot. But I need to make a decision, and I want to have Jesus Christ become Lord of my life. What does that mean? Basically, it means you turn everything over to him, all your mistakes, your failures, and you ask him to take over because that's why he came. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody opens the door, I will come in. And when you do that, the grace and the love of the Father becomes yours. You become a member of the family of God. And the promise of Abraham becomes available to you. So right now, I'm going to just encourage anybody here, if you've never, never experienced that or have never asked the Lord into your life, I'm going to ask you to, on the count of three, just raise your hand real quick because we want to pray for you. One, two, three. Is that you? Raise your hand. Say, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I want to give my life to him. I want to serve him with everything I have. I want to turn my life over to him. I may have made made a mess of some things, but I want to serve God. Just go ahead and just raise your hand. We're not going to point you out or anything. We just want to thank God. We're in the back. We're in the back. There's a hand. Anybody else? We just thank God for the opportunity to see two people come into the kingdom of God every week, making a decision here. We're going to spend a few more minutes on this, and I want to just pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give everybody here the courage. Whoever has never received you as Lord, that you would quicken their heart, give them the courage to to make that decision today. We want to welcome them into the family of God. Any more? Anybody else? Over here on the left, anybody? Raise your hand and just say, yes, Pastor Chris, that's me. I want to receive Christ as Lord. There was one lady way in the back here. Let's just thank God for that opportunity for her to make that decision. Just give it up, Lord, for her in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank God for that. Hey, we have, for anybody that's new here or anybody that's making decisions here, there's this card that says, I've decided. This is in the seat pocket in front of you. You use the, We use this card to connect with you and um, uh, help you with your walk with the Lord. Uh, fill that out. We're going to have the offering baskets come by here in a few minutes. Go ahead and just drop that in there and note on there. I want to make a decision to follow Christ. I want to know more about Gateway. I need help with, with anything. Or I, might, I need help with my family and my kids. Let us know. And then if you need more information, you can go to the Welcome Center. For anybody that makes a first-time decision in, for Christ, we have free Bibles out there. We want to give first steps in Christ information, etc. So we want to help everybody come and know the Lord. Amen. Ushers, let's come forward here. We're going to pray a prayer. And I really appreciate what Pastor Jordan said earlier uh, when he read the scripture in 2 Corinthians about excelling in everything. So Father, that's our desire today is to excel in everything, our families, our homes, our marriages, but also excel in our giving. So bless this time here as we worship and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and worship. Pastor Chris. Come on, let's thank Pastor Chris. How many are going to bless your families today? We're going to walk out this week blessing our children, our spouses, our cousins, our aunts, our parents, our sons and daughters. Pour out your spirit, God. Let's sing it together. Fullness of eternal promise. Come on, let's declare it in our children. Story in your sons and daughters. Let your love run. 
Amen. Yeah, let's give it up to the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I speak a blessing over every family, over every marriage, over every individual, Lord, regardless of our past. We know we all things are new in your presence. And I just speak in Jesus' name that there's courage, there's love, and there's, the Lord, action on our part to see you bless families, marriages, Lord. Let there be restoration. Let there be, Lord, renewal. Let there be hope spring up, Lord God. And let this house be, house, be known as a house of your grace on our families doing life together, husbands and wives together, families together. And so, Lord, give us wisdom as to how to live out your promises and your purposes. And we give you glory for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Everybody says amen, amen. Listen, we got prayer. Teams up at the front here if you need prayer for anything. Go visit all the different uh, uh, tables out in front, all the different ministries. Get involved. And uh, we'll see you next week. God bless. Bye-bye.